Hello, everyone. Thanks for stopping by our session, and we hope you've been having an amazing conference so far. Our talk today is going to be a, about on a topic which is close to every contributor, but it is a nightmare for every implementer. At least that is what we feel. Like just a couple of days ago in the Contributor Summit, we actually met someone who was trying to implement Prow which we'll cover, don't worry, that's what we're here for. And they faced a lot of trouble, and that sort of just reinforced our own belief that Prow is something every contributor, everyone who has made a pull request to Kubernetes is at least somewhat familiar with. They have seen it comment on their PR or their issue, but they've liked it, but when it comes to installing it for their own repos or setting it up or just understanding what is happening behind the scenes of Prow, how it is working, that is not clear. And that is what we aim to solve in this talk. We aim that once you uh, go through our session after this, you feel confident enough in trying out Prow on your own, installing it on your repositories, and basically having fun with it. So before we begin, a bit of introductions are in order. Who are we? I am Arsh Sharma. I work as a developer and experience engineer at Octeto. I also actively contribute to the Kubernetes project. I will be leading the CI signal team in the 125 release. And I'm a new contributor ambassador for Kubernetes SigDocs, where I help people contribute to the project. I'll hand over to Nabarun now. Hey, everyone. Um, I'm Nabarun. I work as a senior engineer at VMware. Um, I have been contributing to Kubernetes uh, for the past three years and spent around two and a half years contributing to SIG release, uh, having led Kubernetes 1.21 last year, which is going to be deprecated this month, next week, uh, possibly. Um, and I'm also the current, currently a release manager uh, in the Kubernetes release engineering uh, subproject. I'm also an elected member of the Kubernetes Code of Conduct Committee. Uh, I have been uh, in the committee for the past uh, eight or so months. Uh, besides that, I help maintaining uh, some other areas in Kubernetes like GitHub administration um, and contributing to uh, other areas of the project. Now, why are we here? What is Prow? Prow is a Kubernetes-based uh, CICD system. Being based on top of Kubernetes, it brings all the pros of running any application of Kubernetes, uh, like you get replication, you get scaling, you get uh, rolling updates, you get highly available nature of uh, any stateless workload that you usually run on Kubernetes. Prow can manage uh, lifecycle of pull requests, uh, like review approvals, merging them based on uh, some criteria uh, through a component called Tide, which we will uh, take a brief look at later. Prow's configuration uh, can be managed through structures inside YAML files. Now, there can be uh, two ways uh, to manage them. One is inside the repository where you host code and can also be stored in a central repository aside, aside from your code. Uh, there are pros and cons of both the approaches. Uh, Ash will be covering them uh, later on in a future section. Prow plug. Prow ships with a very, very highly extensible uh, plugin system, which helps you to infinitely extend Prow and change its and modify its behavior to however you need. We also set a, uh, we also ship with Prow a set of uh, inbuilt plugins, uh, which help you manage several parts of a developer's experience in that system, uh, while uh, doing continuous integration or deployment of your uh, code. Prow also includes something called chat ops. We might have heard this uh, a lot of times. And how we do it is through uh, slash something like commands, like slash honk, which will essentially give you an image of a duck uh, doing some, some naughty things around the wild. Um, Arsh is now going to uh, show you around uh, the chat ops system. So chat ops is probably my favorite bits about Prow because I feel like when I was starting out as a contributor to Kubernetes and you look at all these PRs and all these maintainers, super experienced folks talking in languages you don't understand, Prow is the only simple thing there. It's showing me images of cats and dogs. That's what, what I'm there for, no? 
Chatops basically allows you to have a forward slash and then a command, which allows you to interact with GitHub issues and PRs. So YOLO is not a command. Please don't try that. Um, you, can you can assign issues to contributors. So let's say if you're a new contributor getting started and you want to work on an issue, you can just do forward slash assign. And that would actually assign the issue and let everyone know that you're working on it. Similarly, you can label issues and pull requests. Uh, maintainers can provide approval for pull requests. And once they provide approval, the pull requests get merged using another plugin, which we'll cover later. And other than that, you can also run tests for a particular PR. And there is a lot more you can do. So for those of you who have not had a chance to look at how this all looks like, We'll actually go to a pull request, which is made by our very good friend and active contributor, Madhav, who's here. You should meet him, by the way. And to give some context for this, we'll not go into details, so don't worry. Basically, Go18 introduced something, and uh, we had a fix for that. But then 18.1 fixed that, and we wanted to remove our workaround. So that's what this PR was for. And let's see how Prow has been helping with this PR. So first, what happened is that Kubernetes has a bunch of SIGs, for those who are not familiar. And every part of some code belongs to a SIG. So this belonged to SIG testing. And using forward slash SIG testing, Mother was able to apply this label to the pull request. And then there's some conversation, which we are definitely not going into. And then uh, you can apply labels like this. And this label is applied to the PR, which is a priority important soon label. And let's see what else. You can edit milestones for pull requests and tests. Uh, so when you make a PR, tests are run. And sometimes some of those tests are flaky. And you feel that the, uh, a lot of times what happens is that you need to rerun those tests. And for that, you can simply run the forward slash test all command. And once you see that CI turning green, as soon as it happens, please get maintainers to approve an LGTM, because that CI might turn purple anytime, and you will not have a good time. So once you get the approve and LGTM labels, then your PR is almost there. But uh, you can add more uh, retests and labels like this, like if it's urgent and if someone's working on it, you can triage it and then retest. And then that is how you basically contribute and get your PR accepted. So I think this now gave you an idea of how Prow looks like. And we'll now go back to the slides, which seem to be lost. Murphy's Law. <laughs> Yay, we are back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so now that we have seen chat ops in action, I am going to hand it over to Nabarun, and he has a diagram which will scare you. But I've heard him speak, and I think he makes it easy. So Nabarun, please take it from here. So thanks. Thanks to Arj. He scared us, everyone here. But I'll actually try to declutter through user story of how do they interact. So Arj showed you how Madhav had created a pull request with changes. And we will take that journey through how it actually got tested in Prow. Um, so first, we do have our user who interacts on GitHub right on the left. Uh, I wish I had a pointer, but uh, I'll try to explain as well I can. Um, and when you create a pull request on GitHub, GitHub essentially generates an event. And that event goes through a GitHub app or a bot account to a component called hook, which is in our Prow cluster. And that component keeps on processing those GitHub events and packages them into internal structures, which have some more metadata. For example, uh, they also contain uh, prow plugin config, prow uh, job config. And through this, and another plugin called trigger plugin, it creates a custom resource called prow job. So it's a CRD. Prow job is a custom resource definition that is a central core concept in uh, Prow's landscape. And 
whenever any job has to run in prow, you basically create a prow job custom resource. Notice I told you about the trigger plugin. If you don't enable the trigger plugin, uh, this thing won't be done. Uh, fortunately, by default, the starter templates that we have, the plugin, uh, the trigger plugin is enabled. So any webhook coming through a hook will process an event, uh, will trigger an event essentially. Now we have a custom resource. What do we do? We have to reconcile it, right? We have to act on that created custom resource. We have a component called Plank uh, right there. Uh, Plank processes this custom resource and sees where should I run this and how should I run this. Depending on that, it creates a pod in any of the job clusters. You can have multiple job clusters for isolation. For example, you might have some kind of trusted job, some kind of untrusted jobs, or let's say you are working on a, a private repository and you don't want to mix code, uh, and you want to have proper isolation, so you can run on any, cluster, any job cluster you want. Once that is done, Plank keeps on looking for uh, statuses of those job pods. Once they uh, execute fine, like uh, if there's an error or if they exit successfully, it reports back the status to the status sub-resource of the prow job custom resource. Now, how, how do we get that status back to GitHub, which is where our user is? User won't see a custom resource for a status, right? Mm -hmm. We have a component called crier, which essentially cries all the output in the status sub-resource to GitHub. It knows how and what to infer from that status sub-resource. And it sends back the data to uh, GitHub. When Madhavit created that PR, at the end of the PR, at the end of a GitHub pull request, you essentially see a list of checks. These are the same checks that Crier updates. And it also would provide like a message on if you're failing something, what test is failing. Um, it will basically verbosely show, and then you can retest those specific tests. There are some other components which uh, not necessarily come in the life cycle, but life cycle of a uh, user creating a pull request and getting an output of a uh, CI test. But they are very important. Uh, we have one component called Hor Horologium, which essentially uh, looks at your configuration for any periodic job that you may have created. For example, you just want to check your code sanity, like you want to check the code coverage every day uh, and post them somewhere. It will create that prow job CR from your configuration so that uh, Plank can reconcile it and run that job and then report the status back. Sinker is basically your uh, recycle bin. Uh, what it does is it looks at pods which have passed a certain retention policy. For example, let's say uh, there are job pods which have been lying around for uh, more than 24 hours. Just an example, uh, we might set like more uh, strict or less stricter configs. Um, and when it sees those jobs, it basically deletes the pods as well as the prow job CRs so that the system remains sane. Now I'm talking about like statuses, uh, logs. We we have a lot of artifacts that are generated in this process. Where do you see them? So we have a front end called deck. Uh, if you ever go to prow.kts.io, what you see is essentially deck. Uh, deck is basically a dashboard where you see what jobs we have uh, in the community around all repositories. What is their status? What was the last PR that they ran for? If it was a pre-submit job, which is basically a pre-merge job, or any periodic job status, uh, or post-submits. For example, uh, we have a process in Kubernetes community called promoting images. Uh, we essentially build images into staging environment and then push them into uh, production registries, which you consume in kts.gcr.io, uh, GitHub container registry domain. For example, that job is like a post-submit job. It runs after a promotion configuration has been changed. Um, this was about the core components of Prow. We will talk about uh, two components which are needed uh, when you want like full life cycle of a uh, CI/CD system in Prow. First one is Tide. So we have talked about testing of your changes and uh, labeling of your changes or whatever chat ops you want to do. 
What about merging? Now, if I go about, uh, a, in, in the Kubernetes repository, we see probably like 100 to 500 PRs every 15 days uh, or something like that. If we go about like testing all those PRs against our base uh, main reference and keep on reconciling the status, we might run into a lot of issues or a lot of resource usage issues. What Tide helps us doing in one way is manage a pool of GitHub PRs. It collects a list of PRs from the same repository. For example, we are talking about the core Kubernetes repository, which is Kubernetes slash Kubernetes. It, let's say, collect, collects 10 pull requests and then merges, like, merges them onto the base branch and tries to test it. In this way, you can test like a lot of uh, PRs in short amount of time. Tide also automatically retests PRs when they meet the criteria. For example, uh, we saw Jordan LGTM approved and canceled the hold on Madhav's PR. After doing that, it satisfied all of the criteria. But still, after that, we do a retest of that PR. Once the retest passes, then only we merge it. And you don't require any user intervention. After all of these checks have passed and another retest has gone through, we don't need any more user intervention. Automatically, the PR would be merged if it satisfies all the criteria. Tide also serves live data about current merge pools and a history of actions which can be consumed by DEC uh, to populate the Tide dashboard or the PR dashboard or the history page, which I mentioned earlier. Apart from Tide, the other component which we uh, use in the Kubernetes community is TestGrid. Uh, it's not entirely open source. Uh, the front end is not open source, but the back end is open source. Uh, it's basically an interactive dashboard to view test results. Uh, Arsh later will show you what a TestGrid entails and how we use it in our day-to-day -day workflow when he shows you uh, configuring a prow job. And they're shown in a grid. Uh, here, for example, we're showing the SIG release uh, test grid and where SIG release master blocking is a group of jobs and verify master is a job where this certain set of tests are run and we can see for the previous runs what, what was the status. And this is how we can decipher what is failing in a very verb? We don't need to churn through all the logs of previous runs and how do we find them? What are the refs they ran against? What is the test intra ref? All those kind of things. I would now hand it over to Arsh, who would explain you how do you configure Prow. So when it comes to defining Prow jobs, there are two main approaches you can choose from. This choice, it might seem that this choice is very trivial at first and you could just go ahead with whatever you want. But uh, if you plan to scale your project to the size of Kubernetes, this will come and bite you later if you do not give it thought. So the two approaches we have is one, an in-repo configuration. And in this configuration, you basically define the jobs, the proud jobs, in the same repository where your source code is living. So you would have a dot prow directory or just a dot prow dot yaml file at the root of the repository where you would just list down all of your jobs. It is important to note that in this approach, your jobs are not defined centrally. They would be present for each repository in that particular repository. The other approach is centralizing your job configuration. What this means is that you have a separate repository and the purpose for that repository is to have all the configuration for all the jobs you might be running across many different repositories you have. In this approach, jobs get defined centrally. So let us look at Kubernetes slash test infra where we'll see this approach in action. Yep. No. Uh, oh. All right. So for Kubernetes.test infra, if you go to the config directory here and you go to jobs, 
we are grouping jobs based on uh, the organization and I'm going to show you one of the first jobs I wrote and that is under the Kubernetes directory inside SIG architecture and this is a periodical job. A periodical job is like Nabarun mentioned earlier, a job which runs periodically on, the, uh, on a particular repository. So it's pretty simple and intuitive if you try to read it. It's like any other YAML. You tell that you want the job to be run every six hours. You tell a name for the job. And you tell Decorate2. What Decorate2 does is add sidecar containers, which help in source code checkout and other related stuff. And then you mention what repository you want this job to be run for. In this case, we wanted to run for the main Kubernetes repository. So we specified the org and uh, the repository and the branch too. Path alias is basically when this uh, job checks out the source code, which, will, which we need for the job to do its action. What directory do we want it for? After that, the spec is pretty simple. We just used a Golang based image and uh, what we did is essentially install a tool we wanted to run called devstat and then run the command in it. And that's it. That's, this is how simple it is. It is nothing but a container where you are running some commands. And that's how simple Prom makes your life. And that is why we love it. Towards the end, you see we have annotations. And this is where the test grid Nabarun just talked about comes into picture. So if you notice, we mentioned that the test grid dashboard we want this job to be associated with is sick testing miscellaneous. So if you go to testgrid.kates.io, you'd see a list of all the dashboards here. And that dashboard was sick testing miscellaneous. So if we go here, that's, it. that's where it is. And this is a periodic job. Look, flaky, how nice. Uh, but we go to here, and this is every each run it did for the job. And you can, if you click on any one of these green cells, it will take you to Spyglass, where you can see the logs for the job. And it is these logs that we wanted for this particular job. So if we just look here, this is the information we were interested in. And this is what Proud did for us. It basically grabbed a binary, a Go binary, and ran the results for uh, the binary on the Kubernetes repository and gave us a central place for the logs. So another place where you uh, could have like seen the logs for this, and this is something uh, specific to Kubernetes and not, so if you, have, if you have your own instance, you would have this kind of URL for your own thing, but this is where you can search through all the jobs running across all Kubernetes repositories. So that job was called, yep. So you can just search for jobs. And similarly, you can see the last few runs of the job this way. Where is it? Just bring it again. Mm -hmm. so you Yep, this, this dashboard, that's that. So uh, we are going to now get to the fun bits of actually deploying Prow, and then we'll see how DEC gets configured. So, yep, coming to the interesting parts, the parts where you, <laughs> most of you were here probably for, is how do you actually deploy your own instance of Prow to use it with your own repositories? Well, Step one is uh, creating a GitHub app to configure all of this. Give me a second. Yeah. It's creating a GitHub app. The only rule you need to follow for this particular step is be creative with the name, because we all want a friendly robot in our repositories. Next, uh, when you're creating the GitHub app, this is something you need to be careful of, is that it'll ask you for a webhook URL. And when you're doing this step, it doesn't actually matter what URL you add right now, because we are going to change that later. But remember to keep a note of this, that you need to change this later. And we'll provide a secret here, but we'll get to that later. The third thing you need to uh, take care of is adding a bunch of permissions, because these permissions are needed for Prow, otherwise it will not be able to interact with your GitHub repositories. And this is just a snapshot. There are more uh, 
There are more permissions you need to add, but we didn't want to add a URL right now in the slides. We'll do that later, we promise. So the final thing you need to take care of is in there's a section called subscribe to events and you need to subscribe to all events because Prown needs to know what's happening to the repository in order to react to it. This is where the hook system uh, Nabarun talked about comes into picture because if it is not getting notified of the events, it really can't do anything for you. Once you are done creating the app, make sure to note the app ID and to generate a private key. Keep them very secure because we are going to be using them later. Now I'm going to take it from him. Awesome. So uh, after you set up your GitHub app, uh, upstream Kubernetes sh maintains a binary called Tackle. Uh, recently, we made some changes to Tackle, which uh, made it a little bit uh, trivial easier. to use or easier to use. <laughs> we fixed some bugs uh, a few months back. So since we have already set up our GitHub app uh, and we are not relying on a bot account, what you can do is just run tackle, skip GitHub. And how do you get tackle is if you go to the uh, test okay. infra repo that uh, are short, if you go to CMD, uh, the command directory, you'll see the tackle subdirectory and you just need to go install, uh, check out the source code and go install. That should do it. We don't ship a tackle binary right now, but maybe in the future when it becomes uh, more stable and supports more providers, uh, we may start like shipping it. It runs perfectly for GKE right now, and our dem demo is also based on GKE. Uh, but in case you have uh, any other provider, we are working towards it. In future, you will have other providers inbuilt into Tackle, who, which, which Tackle can use to create Kubernetes clusters appropriately. Just to be uh, sure, you still can run your Prow instance with other providers, just that the simple root of Tackle will not work and currently only works for GKE. Yes. Um, the documentation also s tells you about like manual deploy steps, but in the interest of sanity, we are uh, demonstrating using Tackle. So you let Tackle run. You tell Tackle if you already have a uh, GCP project and a GCP GKE cluster running. If you have one, you can just mention the name, and it will install everything for you in that cluster. Otherwise, it can create a cluster for you as well. And you run it and let it run uh, and pause when it asks you to provide a starter YAML. Now, we're going, why we are going to pause here is because we have to backfill certain information into that YAML. What are those things? Uh, and even before that, we have to apply the prow CRDs. Oh, oh my god, it's too uh, small on the uh, display, but we will make it bigger when we uh, put the PDFs on SCED. But what it does is, it when I talked about the prow job CRs, uh, it just creates the prow job CRDs for later when you want to create prow job CRs so that Kubernetes API server knows, hey, what is this resource and how it is structured. One thing we need is we talked about a lot of uh, things, artifacts like logs, uh, did the test run successfully, or what was the exit code. All of that is currently stored in a GCS bucket. Now you might see this. Commands are very scary, but I'll decipher it for you. It just creates a service account. It creates a bucket. It binds it to the it binds the service account to the bucket, gives it appropriate permissions, and then you can use the credentials uh, in your starter.ml. Make sure to keep your GCS bucket name globally unique, because otherwise you're going to spend 15 minutes like us figuring out what went wrong. Yes. Also, you need to create a uh, secret to give it to the uh, GitHub app so that when, when the webhook calls, there is a unique token which it uh, communicates uh, through. Now, when you do all those changes, uh, you by this step, you would have almost everything uh, that you want to replace in starter.yml and start like creating uh, or creating the resources which Prow uses in that Kubernetes cluster. So you get the starter template from the URL, and then you basically Fill in. grep through all of the templated strings and replace them with the appropriate values that we created before. Now, once you did that, you can just tell uh, Tackle, because Tackle would be waiting for you to give a location of a starter YAML. You can just give it the uh, location. It will download or read it from local disk and then apply it. Once it is done, it will tell you, hey, you're done. Now, you have to get the 
ingress controllers uh, external IP from the cluster that was just created or your existing cluster and point the domain that we put earlier when configuring the GitHub hook for the app there. This is how you get access to deck also, which we were talking about earlier. Yes. Uh, the One of the final steps is to just update the token that we created uh, before, the secret in your GitHub app, and that is very important. Otherwise, all the web uh, deliveries would fail. And the URL you use, this is what you fill in the GitHub app web, hub se web app section I talked about earlier. And the final step is to install the app on a repo, whatever you want. The org that you put in there, the org can be user account itself if you just want to try out for now. But if you are doing it in production, also, the starter template doesn't, uh, is not suggested for production because the starter template creates prow clusters and job clusters, prow clusters and job clusters on the same uh, Kubernetes cluster. Ideally, they should be separate. Uh, that is what we do in upstream Kubernetes. And once you have all of this set up, you just enjoy. Um, now, Ash can talk about benefits of using prow. So, coming to the benefits. Uh, I feel like we all know that collaboration is like the backbone of open source. You cannot have open source if you're not able to collaborate effectively. And I like Prow because I feel that it really makes the process very efficient. So if you have like a lot of repositories, right, and you set up Prow for all of them, what this does is ensure that developers get a similar experience across all repositories for your organization. So they don't have to learn the processes again and learn new commands or figure out or ask what's going to happen. And this is why I love Prow, because developer experience is something which is very close to my heart, and I feel that Prow provides an excellent developer experience. The chat ops-based interaction ensures that you do not have to be a GitHub wizard. Like, if even if like someone is not gone through the nuts and bolts of GitHub, understanding commands like forward slash assign are pretty intuitive because you get the idea that you want to assign someone. And lastly, I feel that Prow is new contributor friendly because if I'm a new contributor, I sometimes feel lost. What are the next steps? I've created a PR. Now, where do I go from here? And with Prow, you can set up automated messages and friendly stuff, which provide next steps that, hey, you have your PR here. These are the persons you need to ping for review. Now, we agree that all uh, like it's not it does not always get them correct. But as a new contributor, I would at least have a first point of contact, even if that is not the correct point of contact, and I would not feel lost. So I feel like these are the benefits of Prow, which is why we love it in upstream Kubernetes. Now, what's the point of this talk? Um, we want you to use Prow. We want you to use Prow for production. And we want you to come back to us, as in sick test, Kubernetes sick testing, and tell us what more we can do. And not just that, we want your help. Uh, when you use Prow, you report us back issues, and even you can contribute to that yourself. Uh, be those good Samaritans of the open source community, and just have fun. Uh, we hang around uh, in, SIG, in the SIG testing channel on Kubernetes Slack. Uh, how you can join the Kubernetes Slack is you can go to uh, slack.kts.io and get an invite for yourself. Uh, when we publish the PDF, um, I'm sorry. Oh. When we publish the PDF, the PDF would have the links. So you can just click on it and uh, join the Kubernetes Slack and go to the channel. You can also join our mailing list. Uh, and that mailing list would give you access to uh, our meeting docs. It will put a uh, meeting invite to your calendar so that you can come to the meeting and ask us questions and uh, see how you can contribute more. With that. We both thank you all for joining us. Uh, we would like to take questions if you have like one or two minutes. Okay. Uh, Please, if or you, you have can... any questions, just catch us after the talk. Thank you so much for attending. <laughs> okay, so uh, we have one minute to take one question, um, and then we can talk in the hallway, obviously. Um, 
um i am not sure about that because i think at this point but we do run a lot of different kind of jobs uh, since we build kubernetes for a lot of different kind of platforms uh, the question is can we run different platforms uh, test for test for different platforms on the same build cluster or the same job cluster Yeah, you mean like uh, ARM or AMD on the same cluster, right? Uh, right now we do ship, uh, but I have to verify and we can talk like. Yes. Ah, okay. Okay. Do we have time more to take more? Do we have time to take more questions? No. No. no? Okay. Uh, you can join join us in the hallway or ping us on Slack. or email or anywhere thank you so much for thank you so much for attending